Welcome. What's up, people? It's August 26. I'm Sergio, and we're going to talk about story today again. Welcome. I welcome you to this chat. Hopefully, you guys um, have been having a good week. Uh, my week's been uh, pretty productive. Uh, getting a bunch of things done, which is good. And uh, today, I kind of wanted to talk about an art routine because uh, I, I kind of want you guys to know what I've done. And I actually want to know what you guys are doing to improve yourself and have a art routine. So um, we'll get into all the details of this in a second. But I think to me, this is one of the most important things. It's like it's like training, right? I've mentioned this before, like a dojo training, right? If you're a if you're a like a martial artist, you go to the dojo and you practice like Bruce Lee, right? If you're a dancer, you go to the dance studio and you dance and you practice all day long, right? Um, that's the only way you get better at things is if you actually practice and do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to get into that and we're going to talk about that a little bit and, and see, uh, hopefully what you guys are into as well. Okay. Um, couple of announcements I want to start out with because, uh, we're warming up to the Lightbox expo and a couple of events that are really, really cool that are going to be happening. And I want you guys to know about it. So it's good that we chat. If you have any questions uh, about what's coming up or anything in general, just chat that in. Hopefully we can answer it either as a group or, you know, I'll see what we can do to field those questions. Uh, first event, I should say, is the Lightbox Expo. If you guys have not registered yet, I highly recommend you do this. Go to lightboxexpo.com and register there. It, uh, they have different tiers, but the lowest one only costs a dollar. OK, and I highly recommend you do that because there are hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of artists and participants coming this year because it's an online event. So um, we're going to be there. Storyboard Art. We're one of the proud sponsors of Lightbox Expo. And you can see our schedule on what's happening Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We have a chalk full with a bunch of talks. Uh, we've invited a bunch of buddies, really amazing professionals that are companies like Lucasfilm, Pixar, Warner Brothers, Blizzard, uh, and everywhere in between. And I'm gonna be hosting a lot of those chats and we can talk about uh, anything story related. It's gonna be really productive and I think you guys are gonna get a lot out of it. So I hope uh, you will join us for that event. Coming up to that event, so everybody's prepared to do some networking and improve yourself. We're going to sponsor a drawing and portfolio challenge. This is a free training. So if you've been part of Storyboard Art, you know that we sponsor a lot of events. We sponsor talks. We do trainings. We do uh, you know courses. And a lot of this stuff is for free. This is going to be another free training that we're doing, the drawing and portfolio challenge, where we're going to challenge you to come and draw with us, draw with me. I'm going to guide this one. And we're going to draw together, and we're going to make some images and improve our portfolios. All of this is time so that we do this before the Lightbox Expo launches, and then you have something to show. At least you can you know, have some links. You can pass around uh, maybe your info, and you have a couple cool, fresh, new storyboard panels that you want to show to people, recruiters, artists, everybody in general, clients, anything that can happen there. That's coming up. The registration should open that for that on September 1st, I believe, and then the, the actual course begins on September 7th. And we're going to email out everybody the dates, and we're going to let people know about this on social media as well. Okay, I should also mention the Story Artist Mentorship Program, which many of you uh, have signed up to our waiting list. Thank you for that. Uh, if you want to get on the waiting list, you can go to storyboardart.org, go to the courses page, and you'll see that Story Artist Mentorship entry there. Uh, you're going to be the first to know about uh, early bird pricing, discounts, dates, everything there. We had a really cool announcement today about a special guest co-instructor that's going to be a mentor alongside me in that program. So that is a year-long course where we guide people to improve their art and their portfolio and become a story artist. There's a lot of guys that uh, that are on these chats that are some uh, uh, mentorship alum. So uh, I love it. I love seeing those guys there. I should say big shout out to everybody there. Uh, yeah, I see JC and Chad. How are you guys? Good to see you guys up on here. And um, uh, and then on Instagram, we're, we're blowing it up. All right. So uh, I, I'll just remind everybody that if you have any questions throughout what we're talking about here, go ahead, type that in and send us a message and then we'll field it and we'll we'll see what we can do to uh, to respond. Let me uh, talk a little bit about the, the topic today that I wanted to uh, just share with everybody because I 
I mentioned this a couple of times is that when you see like a professional athlete or you see somebody working at the top level, like a, a musician or, you know, a dancer or anything that requires just like mental discipline and constant practice and work, you see the end result, right? You, everybody knows like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan and, uh, you know, uh, anybody, any, it's like pro athlete that you follow. You might say, wow, these guys are amazing, but you don't necessarily see the hard work that goes into it. Right. And um, I, I encourage you to actually look at what these guys are doing, because I know every single one of them, I actually researched uh, like Michael Jordan, what his uh, routine was. He would wake up at like five in the morning and he would do a practice uh, session with his buddies. Right. There was um, a, the guy, a lot of the guys on the Chicago Bulls would come to his own house where he had a, like a full basketball court. I mean, you know, it's Michael Jordan, right? So he, can, he has the resources to do this stuff, but he would practice hours before the official practice of the Chicago Bulls. Then everybody would get up and go at like, let's say, I don't know, 9, 10 a.m. in the morning when they actually had the official practice for the Bulls, they would go to the Bulls training center, right? But they were already warm up and they were already warmed up and they had already put in a couple of hours of practice. This was every single day that they did this. And uh, musicians, right? Anybody working at the top level who's who has to become a professional musician is practicing their scales and their music and everything day in and day out. Okay. So let me ask you a really, you know, honest question. Would you think that art or getting to the highest level of the industry and the entertainment industry is any different? This is what you have to be doing. And if you love it, if you're a musician, and you love music, it's not work. This is something that you enjoy doing. You actually put the hours in because you want to become better and you want to get good at it. Okay. The same thing goes with art. And so I just wanted to share with you uh, maybe some of the things that I've done over the years and that, that I'm doing now. Uh, I'll admit that, you know, it's not every day that I'm a hundred percent disciplined with these things, but I do try and stay consistent as much as possible. Um, another good example, just talking about artists is, uh, you know, I, lo I love Norman Rockwell. A lot of people know who that guy is, right? Uh, I, I know from, from reading his books and, and some of the history that he had, that he would work every single day from, from Monday to Sunday uh, at painting. He would go to his painting studio, and I think he was up at 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. working his, in his painting studio seven days a week. Okay, so that's why that guy was able to produce so much artwork. Right. So these guys lived and breathed their their art, their vocation, their passion. And I think at least the beginning, you should have that same kind of enthusiasm for doing storytelling and, and doing your storyboards and doing any kind of artwork that you that you want to do. So when I when I started in this, like really seriously, which was at the, like I went to the art school, I was at the university level after I graduated high school. That's when I really got the taste and the idea uh, of what it took to actually improve. And, you know, I was not anything special. I still am not <laughs> anything special. Uh, but through paying attention, through hard work, through repetition, and just putting in the hours, I was able to improve myself and learn from everybody else. And uh, that takes an incredible dedication. So I was literally working in, in uh, at, at the college level when I was actually, I was focused on that. I was able to to go full time. And from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m., I had classes and I was drawing like probably close to six to nine hours a day. This was for four years that I did this, you know, with that intensity. Um, now, it's not every day because you have your breaks, right? You have your uh, session breaks. So you have your summer session, your spring session, all that stuff. So there's like months in between where you're, you got to, you know, got to rest. But during the time where my, my courses were there, like I would have classes from nine to six, for example, on a, a normal day. Then at six, you know, we'd probably grab with, with a bunch of friends, something to eat real quick. And then at, at from six to nine, there was another like figure drawing session and you would go and you draw all night long. Right. And then at nine o'clock you go home right? and, you know, I, I would probably do my homework at that time. And I go to bed at like midnight and stuff. So th that was the, the intensity level that I, that we all had to do. There was many of us who were doing that. And then after college, after I graduated, you had some, I had some skills and then I basically had to create my own art routine. And one of the things that I did uh, was study film and I was copying movies. I was doing studies there. And I also, this was 
from the college days, it was inbred in me. This was something that that really came and was like implanted in my brain that I was sketching and drawing all the time. And so I carried a sketchbook around and I tried as much as possible to go to the zoo to do cafe sketches. And I just literally had a sketchbook with me on hand at all times. So if I took the bus, if I would, if I had any spare mo- minute, I would, I would sketch some, something. Um, I would even do that at like the dentist office and, you know, the DMV and random places like that. And nobody had to know what I was doing. I was just kind of doodling in a sketch pad, but that's the kind of um, like pencil mileage that I had to build up. And I liked it. I loved doing that. It was like observation of people. And I was coming up with stories. It was really, really fun. And I have boxes full of sketchbooks over the years. I've kept them all. (laughs) I don't think I've lost one and they're all there. So this is, it is like, uh, yeah, I love what you're saying here, JC. It's like it's a lifestyle choice that we're going into the entertainment industry, and that we want to be passionate and dedicate our lives to do, to doing this. And and that's all in a good way because I watch films. I I love being creative. I talk about things with friends and my family, like about ideas and uh, and storytelling. And these are all things that really inspire me and keep me going. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you is that you should have a art routine. And this is something that you do on a daily basis, if possible, as much as possible to draw and improve your art in, in many ways. So I'll give you an example. I have on my calendar, which I usually block out my time throughout the week. I'll have my, my art training, right? I call it the art dojo. That's what it's called on my calendar. I should show you guys sometime, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I must admit, I don't get to it every single day now because I'm busy with, with work and, uh, and other stuff like, like uh, preparing things for the Lightbox Expo and the mentorship uh, at the moment. But when, when things kind of calm down, I will have uh, a block of time in the morning. I usually like to do it in the morning, but I'll set aside at least an hour. And I'll knock out some figure drawings on, uh, you know, bodiesinmotion.photo, which is a cool website I recommend to you guys. Um, or I'll just, you know, do some sketches. I'll sit down on my drafting table and actually draw. And I like to draw on paper if I'm doing these like kind of personal sketches for myself. I practice perspective and I have this laid out literally like I've taken the time to figure out, okay, what are my weak spots? What are the things I want to improve? And I'm working on perspective, anatomy, uh, vehicles, uh, and, you know, that so that kind of goes with the perspective, but there's like ellipses and vehicles and buildings and stuff that architecture that I, that I like, um, that I want to improve on. And there's also sculpture. I really love to sculpt and I don't do it as much as I want to. And sculpting for me is, is connected with anatomy. So if you know your, the human body and the muscles and the bones and, and, and the proportions and everything there, uh, I think that translates really well into sculpture. So I love doing that. I just love getting my hands in there and actually, uh, and I'm sculpting in clay. It's not in like stone or marble. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Okay. Um, anyway, these are some of the things that I do. And then I also have like a color day and a painting day. Uh, those things unfortunately have taken a sideline for now, but on the weekends, I will try as much as possible to go out and do like a watercolor or, or I have my oil paints and stuff like that. So um, those are, those are things I really enjoy doing. And that is all just to, to inspire me and keep me fresh and keep my skills sharp. And I encourage you guys to do the same, okay? That is just to come up with a a training, a daily training regimen. So imagine if you're like training for a marathon, right? Imagine if you're uh, training for a concert, you're a pianist and you have to train train for a concert. You know, months in advance, you're gonna have to build up and learn the music or, you know, for for a marathon run, you have to like months in advance, have to build up the stamina to be able to, to hold out through a full marathon run, right? Same thing with art. You got to keep that consistent throughout. And I recommend, you know, sometimes if you're training for a marathon, you might go all out. And then afterwards you, you just kind of, you're done. <laughs> um, I know some people have done that. Uh, but I think with art, at least you want to make it consistent and you're gradually growing and growing. And you do this throughout your whole career. You do this through your whole life. I really look forward to when I'm like old and gray and well, I'm already gray, but <laughs> when I'm older and let's say like crusty and 80 years old, if I make it that far, that I'm going to be like still growing and drawing because hopefully I'll be retired at that point. And the only thing I can focus on is just creating art and, uh, and I'll still be at it because when you're at that age and you spent so many years and I've met other people that, that have, you know, have mentored me and I've learned from, from amazing teachers that were in their ripe old age and they were so amazing. And I want to get to that age and be inspired like that. So um, that's just, some suggestions. So the reason you do this, okay, let me explain 
why you would do this is so that you improve and you get better. It's difficult, I must admit, that you don't see the improvement on a daily basis. So if you're a musician or like if you're playing around with scales and stuff, I feel like you'll notice that more. Like if you exercise for a month, at the end of the month, you feel like stronger, you have more stamina um, and uh, you might lose weight or something. You notice it, you see it. With art, it's not as apparent. So that's why I tell uh, the other su suggestion is that you keep everything you do. And uh, at the end of the year or, or, at, or at the end of six months, for example, you do a check in with yourself and you see what you've done up to up until that point and see if you have any improvement. And I, I if you do this consistently, I guarantee it that you're going to see some improvement there. So that is um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys about that. So let me know if you have any questions about that one and um, and maybe tell us what kind of drawing drawing regiment that you're doing or any kind of drawing routine. I would love to hear it. So, um, yeah, this is awesome. JC, thank you for this uh, comment. Jester drawings every day, if you can, at least 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, I would say even if you can't spare 30 minutes, can you do 10, you know, can you do five minutes? Everybody can do five minutes. If you can do five minutes, you can do 10 minutes. All right. If you get to 10, you're probably going to like it. So you're probably going to get to 30. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's what it's about. Okay, cool. Yeah. Discipline for sure. Um, Oh, this is a good uh, comment from JC. Thank you, buddy. Get yourself the following book, The Natural Way to Draw by Kim and Nicolades. Uh, you won't regret it. It's the curriculum of the Art Students League of New York. Uh, have schedules and drawing exercises. Uh, you got yourself a college program in that book. Wow, what a great suggestion. I have not, um, uh, I think I might have seen that book at a certain point, but I don't have that one. So that's a wonderful suggestion there. Cool. Great question. This one, I need a drink of water before I answer this question. Okay. William Kruger is asking, how do you push through the times when you burn out a little? Man, what an excellent question because we were, we were all there, buddy. Uh, I've been I've been burned out many times and it's, it's probably because I haven't had the right balance in, in the, in just my lifestyle. Okay. So I'm, I'm grinding really hard at work. Maybe I'm grinding really hard on my personal stuff. And then I, and I neglect other things. I might neglect relationships. I might neglect family. I might neglect, you know, whatever household chores. And, and then after a while you're just done, you just, you know, you just feel exhausted. And so I've been there. I know what that feels like. And what I, what I do recommend <laughs> is that you give yourself uh, some breaks in between. Now that might seem obvious, but you want to, you kind of want to champion the su successes that you have. So if you reach a milestone, you know, give yourself a weekend off, all right? Just force yourself to say, screw it. I'm going to go off. And then that's where I'll actually, cause most of the time when I'm grinding that hard, I'm working on projects. And those are things that are not my own personal work. I might be doing client work. I might be doing studio work. So then I'll grab my sketchbook and that weekend I'll go out sketching, you know, I'll go away with a friend or, you know, maybe I'll take my family. And, and then that weekend is just like watercolors. Okay. And it's something different. I can unplug, but I'm still being creative there. Right. That's one thing. That's one way to do it. The other one is to, uh, to know that this happens and to schedule in to your, to your lifestyle and to your schedule that you're going to have breaks. Cause I don't mind going intense. I can go intense for like, uh, months at a time. Right. And that way, uh, you know, at least I'll build up to it. I know it's going to happen and I'm not going to freak out. But after, let's say six months, then, you know, then I'll take a month off. Right. And this, that's why you, you do it with, uh, with like freelance work. You can do that. You can set it up that way. Um, my cat here is going to back me up on, on some of these things. <laughs> so my cat here, Richard is also gets, uh, <laughs> suffers from my burnout because I don't pay attention to this guy and he's always crying about it. So, uh, the thing that you want to be doing. All right. Thanks, Richard, for that cameo. OK, um, the thing that you want to be doing, if you can, is certainly give yourself time to to rest. Right now, the best way to do this is to stay consistent and not get yourself into into pinches. So if you like if you're tight on money, if you're broke and there's no way out, you just have to grind, you have to grind, you have to grind. That's a, that's one like road to to burnout. So one thing that you should be doing is saving money. Don't like blow it on stupid things, right? Don't, if you don't need a new phone, don't buy a new phone, right? Can you cut expenses? Like if you're, if you're hardly watching cable TV, get rid of that. You know, you might just stick with your Netflix or, or YouTube. You can get a lot on YouTube or, or Hulu or something. 
Um, you know, things like that. So you, you save some money and that in the times where it's like, it's really like dry, you have some space where you can take a breath. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can, you can, you know, have some economic stability that way. The other thing uh, is if you're going to take a job and you know, it's going to be really intense, at least know it's going to be for a, a limit. And I think, um, you know, I just know myself and I kind of get burnt out and tired of a particular project after about two, two years. After about two or three years, I know I'm like, ah, you know, the, my pace starts to slow down and I have to take a back seat. I really do uh, need a refresher. <laughs> and, you know, three years could be a whole feature movie, right? Uh, three years could be a, a TV show that you're working on. So th those things could be great. And but, uh, you know, I just personally find that if I'm going grinding really, really hard, I want to like slow down, take a breath and refresh myself. That's just some of the tips. Hopefully, you know, let us know what you guys are doing to, to help that. Um, Cause maybe there's other people who, who have that same issue. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. There's a great conversation going on with, uh, with this topic. Um, and oops, sorry, let me bring this up again. So, so William is, is just a follow up on that. Uh, he's saying I get frustrated because life making money for my family gets in the way of drawing. But I have time now and I'm having the desire to start boarding again. Well, this is one of the, the, the positive side effects of this pandemic that we have right now is that we are we were kind of forced to, to stay home, to take a breath. Things are closed. Right. You know, you have to kind of stay at home and, and be with your family. And that gives you time now that you can maybe readjust things. And you're right. You have to balance the the like the daily work grind, it, like especially if you're not doing art on a daily basis let's say you're not working as a as an artist right now that's totally fine and you but you want to work towards that so you can slowly transition out of that day job into an art job let's say um but then you have to you have to like plan this out literally like with a calendar and make an effort to be disciplined so that you and it, like i said if, if we're talking about like jc sent uh, mentioned uh, earlier if you're doing 30 minutes a day you know, that that's think of all the things that you waste time on, <laughs> right? Can you sacrifice 30 minutes of that show that you're watching on Netflix and actually draw something that will progress? And if you do that, if you do that for a month over time, I mean, how many hours is that in a month if you're doing that for 30 days? You know, somebody do the math for us. That's amazing. Right. And then you'll have a really solid place to be. And this is why I recommend, you know, check out the training that we're going to do for the drawing and portfolio challenge, because just within like a week or two that we're doing that challenge, you're going to have a ton of drawings that are going to come out of that. And it's going to force you to participate. The excitement is going to be there with other people. That's one thing I recommend. And, and hopefully that'll get everybody out of their rut. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Um, here's a, here's a great question from uh, a Facebook user. Okay. So I was on a personal project and in the middle of the project, I made a big mistake and the project was supposed to be finished last week, but now it's dragging on. When I got back on, I feel like I can't work on it anymore. How do I get the motivation to work on it? Uh, that's a great question. Hopefully you guys have some suggestion here, suggestions here for that. You know, I, when, <laughs> let me be honest and frank with, with a question like that. It is, I've been there so many times that you're working on a project and you're just, your eyes roll over because you just do not want to finish the project for the client. You're just like, man, this is so dumb. I don't like it. I'm not into it, but I never say that. I really never say that. I never let out those feelings publicly because my professional pride will kick in at that point. And if I say I'm going to do something, I'm really going to come through and do it, especially if I'm, I'm working on a job for a client and I promise them you know, with a contract, I usually always have a contract and I promise them on a date or a certain amount of drawings and that kind of thing. I will follow through with that because my professional reputation is very important to me and I, and I will do it. So how do you get the motivation to get back in it? The, you know, unfortunately, I think my answer to that would just, you have to know that this is important, that your, your reputation is at stake here. You pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you sit down and you do the work. You don't think about it. You turn your brain off. That, that part of the brain that's saying, I hate this, I don't want this, this sucks, I don't want to continue doing this job, which we all have, that happens to everybody, I think. Uh, turn that off for a second and you sit down, you do the work. You sit down and you do the work. And you just start drawing. You st just start doing it. And 
like lo and behold, you'll find that by the end of a couple hours ago by, you actually did the work and it's done and you can put it away. And then the, the lesson learned from that is don't take gigs that you don't want. <laughs> don't take gigs that you know are going to be a grind. It's going to be hard to get through uh, because that's inevitably going to happen. So it just, just keep, keep that in mind. The, hopefully that, uh, <laughs> that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Hey Derek, uh, what's up buddy? Uh, yeah, it was the same thing here. Derek says, wish my day job got it. it hasn't let up. This this happens to everybody. It's just like this constant um, expectation that you have to meet deadlines and things must be really tight. You know, you might have a team of people that are expecting you to come through. Well, you know, it's it's important to um, to to be a pro and to power through that. But but then set yourself some limits. You know, maybe at the at the end of the like the the milestone that you have, you might want to let your team know, even though there's a disappointment there that you say, hey, you know, I can only give this much for the next quarter. Right. And you, you kind of put some limits on that. And you know what? I think, you know, if you calculate it right and if you say it in a diplomatic way, you might be able to get by and tell people, oh, well, um, you know, this guy is only able, he can't do any overtime this month. Well, you know, they might understand because everybody's been there. Too. So hopefully, um, uh, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there. Ha, ha, this is great. And William, you have some great questions tonight. I'm bringing up William's questions here because you're you're on point with a well, with a lot of things here. Uh, you're saying I'm a little older. Do you think there's still time, room in the industry for an artist in the late 30s and 40s? Man, I wish I were in my 30s again. Uh, the, <laughs> you are not old, buddy. And this is. Uh, for everybody out there, I get questions for people in their 50s and 60s, and I'm not there yet, fortunately, knock on wood, I'm getting there. <laughs> but uh, uh, there, there really isn't any time limit for, for you guys who, who wanna get into this. Really, I know people who have gotten into art and, and the entertainment industry in their 30s and 40s and 50s, in fact, because they've transitioned from other industries. And you know that is, it's totally fine. The only thing you need are the skills. Like some people have worked in advertising for their whole career and all of a sudden they, they want to switch to the entertainment industry and do storyboards for that. Well, that's great. And so there you really, you're, the time is now. The time is now. If you feel like you want to get into this, it's right. Forget about the age. Nobody's going to ask you how old you are. You know, in fact, the, the ironic thing that I have some gray hair, <laughs> people might look at you and say, oh, this guy's got experience. He's got a bunch of gray hair <laughs> because before I looked like a kid when I was, you know, just starting out, um, which only lasted for a little bit. <laughs> and then now, uh, you know, the experience adds up. And so you, the other thing that you're going to be that maturity level, just as an, an adult, right? You might've been in other companies and you know how to handle yourself and work with team members. That's, that's all a benefit for your age, right? So it is not, uh, anything to think like, Oh, well, I'm too old. I can't do this. Yeah. My, maybe the kids nowadays can pick up the software like nothing else, right? A new application, a new software comes and they're just jumping on it like, like nothing else. But that doesn't mean you can't learn it. And again, I've worked with people in their seventies and they've picked up 3d animation and 3d tools like that and blown us all away. I have that story that I worked at Lucasfilm with, with, uh, one of, uh, George Lucas's buddies from school. And this guy, he came in there and he's got gray hair. He's, he's looking, you know, he's looking seasoned like, uh, like George, right? And man, he blew us all away. He blew us all, us young kids, when he started working, this guy was amazing. And so that's when like you look up to these veterans and you say, wow, this guy has the experience. This guy knows what he's doing. And we were all just sitting there watching him produce some amazing stuff. And he learned 3D like nothing. That was really cool to see this guy was still sharp in his seventies. Okay. <laughs> so that, that is pretty awesome. Um, anyway, so great question, but no, man, jump into this, have some fun. Entertainment industry is a wonderful thing. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. Let me, let me go and jump on Instagram. See uh, who's asking some questions here. Ah, this is a great question. So uh, I can't bring this on screen for everybody else, but let me, let me just answer this from virtual Fred, Fred Lee. Uh, what kind of exercise would you say is the equivalent in drawing to a mu musician practicing scales? So this is a great question. So what's the equivalent of a musician practicing scales? What's the equivalent in drawing? If you ask me, the equivalent of that is figure drawing. 
is anatomical figure drawing and gesture drawing, right? I think JC mentioned that into the comments. There's a bunch of guys talking about gesture drawing. So gesture drawing and, and figure drawing and an animal, anatom <laughs> let me say this right, anatomical studies is what you want to be learning. Now, there are other things you can be learning too, but th to me, that's the equivalent. So figure drawing, just drawing, drawing, drawing. And that scales. That's to me, it's like, okay, I got a pose. I got to knock out that pose. I got to, you know, figure out, the, you know, the tilt of the head, the weight, uh, the gesture, the story that's in that body, okay, in, in that pose, in that action. So um, that to me is the equivalent. So you do that every single day, you're going to get better. Now, that doesn't mean if you like architecture and you want to draw buildings all the time, that's fine. You know, those could be your scales, so to speak, right? Same thing goes if you, if you really love props and robots and action stuff, you might want to draw airplanes and helicopters and, and, and cars. I know guys who are amazing at doing that. That's why that's on my bucket list of, of things I need to improve on because I'm not as good as those production designers who can do amazing vehicles and tanks and, and you know, uh, helicopters and all that kind of stuff, right? So to me though, figure drawing, I'm, I'm pretty solid when it comes to my anatomy and, and, uh, and posing. That doesn't scare me because I can do that a lot and I've done that a lot. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. But that's a really great question for you guys. Um, <laughs> this is cool. So uh, let me see, McClendon Bryan, I hopefully I pronounced your, your avatar there correctly. What college did you go to and how did you start storyboarding? Um, uh, thanks for that question. Let me tell you, I went to the Academy of Art University in San Francisco back in, graduating in 1999. <laughs> Ancient history for a lot of you guys. Uh, that was back when they first started their kind of illustration animation program. And I learned how to draw. I learned how to have classical skills. Uh, I learned how to paint. I learned how to do like just the foundational skills. And I did tailor towards the end of my, of my, you know, my, my degree there. I did actually get a degree and I graduated, um, that I, I created a, uh, you know, a short film, a short animated film. And then I used that, you know, to, to land a job once out of, once out of college. And, uh, and then I just weave my way through different jobs to get into storyboarding. Cause I really, I, at first I wanted to be a 2d animator and I was trained as a 2d animator and I got an animation job like doing cleanup and that kind of thing right out of college. If you guys know what that means, um, you know, assist, assistant animating. Right. And, uh, and so I was doing that for a while, which was great. I loved it. But then the 2D animation jobs dried up. And so I, I went to become a 2D animator in, I found a production in, in Spain. I went to go do that. And I worked out there at the, what later became the Spa Studios, which is the Sergio Pablos Animation Studio, another Sergio. <laughs> and uh, and then on that, in that gig, I also became a story artist because they had an opening and they needed some help. And that I fell in love. That's when I made the transition to going full-time in story. And that's really when I, I learned. I learned from the guys on the job. I learned from, from just, you know, any nugget of information that people could, could tell me. And that was amazing. So from then on, that, that was it. So, uh, and really, it's all been a constant learning process ever since I graduated college. So would I, would I do that again? I, I think I should bring this up because I've, I've talked about this a lot. I think the price of higher education nowadays is so extraordinarily high that I would really think hard about doing another four-year degree. Uh, I got into debt when I went to college and you know I eventually paid off that debt, but uh, I, I just don't think the, the price of higher education is worth it for most people. You have to be really, really dedicated and get something of value out of those uh, university programs. And if you don't, then you're stuck with a hundred thousand dollar debt or more. So just be very careful when you're going to art schools and that kind of thing, because um, uh, the prices are, are, are crazy. So this is why, and let me make a, a shameless plug for storyboard art. I, I have not found a, uh, an art academy and there, maybe there are some out there. So I, you know, there's probably some good ones. I have not found an art academy, a, a university level course, that can really train the story artists that uh, like the programs that they've done at places where I work, like Pixar, they train artists for, for like four or six months, I think it is uh, eight hours a day to become a story artist. And even then there, that does, there's no guarantee that you're actually going to make it on the story team. Okay. So there is no college level course I know of that can meet that rigorous requirement to become a, a story artist. 
And this is why we are doing a program that's called a story artist mentorship, because we mentor people to become story artists. And that program runs a full year. And this is why that program lasts that long, because you need that much time to better yourself and improve. OK, so you guys can find out all that stuff on the registration page when we get that up. But that'll come later. But uh, thanks for that question. <laughs> um, uh, bring this up. So SCAD has a story course. Excellent. Uh, that's very cool. Yeah, debt, sad story. This is, uh, oops, that, yeah. Yeah, I know this one. So yeah, I don't recommend you guys get into debt. Uh, that's the one thing I think is is a really, um, uh, especially now in like a time of economic turmoil, you do not want to get into debt. There are many, many other ways that you can uh, get the education that you need to, um, to uh, become a story artist and become a pro artist there. Um, this is a, let me ans answer this question. And then I think this will probably be the last one. We've got to jump off for tonight, but thanks for all this really good conversation. So the uh, on Instagram here is asking, how can I create a constant drawing regimen if I have to change house several times a week? I've tried a lot of times and methods, but it just doesn't last. Uh, that's a really good question. It really comes down to where you gotta, you have to analyze and be honest with yourself. What time do you have throughout the day that you can take a sketchbook, or you can maybe have a couple of references that you're that you're looking at on your phone or on Instagram or something like that, and you draw. You know, you can even draw from your imagination. You just sit down and do it in a dedicated way. Can you spare ten minutes a day? And that means every, if you have a sketchbook, you can carry that anywhere, right? And you don't have to get fancy with your tablets. You don't have to bust out your your computer and a big setup. You can just use a sketchbook. That's what I recommend. And pencil and paper or pen and ink and paper and you're done. That's all it is. OK. And can you do that 10 minutes a day? That's enough. That's your regimen. OK. And then maybe that you pick one day where you're doing figures. You pick another day where you're doing backgrounds. You pick another day where you're doing uh, vehicles and props and, and action poses, something like that. And then over time, that's your regimen. And if that's all you get, that's all you get. Five minutes, 10 minutes. But come on, I, I, I really challenge you to tell me that you don't have 10 minutes a day to do something because you could find 10 minutes a day. Seriously. I mean, you could take a shower faster. All right. <laughs> you can sleep 10 minutes less. All right. That is possible. Right. Does it hurt? Yes. Nothing is easy uh, to accomplish. That's, you know, that none of this is easy, but you have to put in the dedication and time to do it. If you really want it, if you really want it, you're going to do what it takes to get there. That's just the honest truth. Okay. <laughs> so I know it's hard. And I, I don't want to sound like, oh, yeah, you just you got to suck it up and do it. No, it is difficult. OK, so the, but the way to do it is to figure out and reverse engineer in your day to day and your time and figure out how you can actually do it, because um, no one's going to do it for you. And you're just going to have to figure it out. And this is why, you know, come to groups like this, come to chats like this. Maybe some people can give you some suggestions and not just me. OK, because I don't know your situation. And I don't know everybody else's situation, but I'm just giving suggestions. Maybe one of these will stick. Okay. Hopefully it'll spring up an idea and a light bulb will illuminate in your head and you say, okay, I can do this. You know, maybe it's just one day a week. Maybe that's it. Maybe you can spare a Sunday or a Saturday to do something. So that goes for everybody. It's the importance, I guess, of what I'm talking about here is that you just have an art routine and you have the desire to do it. And by doing that, after a while, you're going to have a portfolio. You get that portfolio together. You start showing people. And then all of a sudden you start landing jobs. And then after a while, guess what? You are now a professional artist and you're making a living at doing the thing that you loved. That's what is really important. All right. So good. I think on that note, this is probably a good place to end it. Thank you guys for, for joining up in this chat. This is a lively conversation. Appreciate that. And, um, and yeah, anything else? We'll, we'll start these up again next week on Monday and Wednesday. And if you guys uh, have any other questions until then, just direct message us in our social media or hit us up directly um, by email through our storyboard art website. Okay. Talk to you soon. Have a good evening. See ya.